Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. Today we will continue on our culvert. In the previous videos we have created one of the prefabricated elements, but in reality many of these elements will be connected together as shown in the picture to form a tunnel or underground passage for pedestrians to walk instead of placing each component one by one. In our main project we got a clever trick up our sleeves and that is creating a parametric array family. If you're new to this concept, I've covered it extensively in a prior video. But just quick, an array is a tool for creating multiple instances or copies of an element along a line with a fixed or user-defined spacing. Arrays allow for simultaneous manipulation of these elements inside the group, meaning changes made to one element in the group apply to all. We have the culvert element, and we want the spacing between each culvert element to be a calculated value based on the user-defined culvert length and the total array length, creating an unanimous array of elements, meaning there is no gap between each element. So let's kick things off by starting a brand new line-based family where our culvert array will be created. Now in the line-based template, there are some predefined built-in parameters like this line, which I will increase to better fit our culvert array. So we start drawing up the reference planes. We only need two, don't need any more. The first reference planes will constrain the first element in our array, and the second reference plane will constrain the second. And remember, it's the number two that sets the tone for the rest of the array. When you start to put parameters on this array, it will decide everything about the array. So the only thing we need to control is the number two element in relation to the first element. Let's adjust the scaling, making our numbers a bit more readable. Then we go to our culvert family and load it into the lane based family, making it a nested family. When working with arrays, we want the array component to be nested as it is easier to control in the array itself, since it can be a rather complex geometry with parameters and formulas which this culvert is, and when nested, it will behave as one single unit, where we can control it as a whole. One thing we do need to do with nested families is create the same parameters from the culvert family inside the new line-based family, otherwise the end user will not be able to change the culvert geometry when loaded into the main project. We just quickly create the parameters. We make them instance parameter because we want to use the built-in length instance parameter in a formula later with some of the new parameters and to use and to, and to use parameters and to use two parameters in a formula they both need to be either instance or type we can't mix them so now we created all the parameters now let's just type in some uh, numeric values for each of them so when associating them later to the culvert the culvert won't break and we also need to add a material parameter the last step to give the end user access to the culvert parameters when loaded into the main project is to connect the parameters from the nested bolt family to the host family we locate the culvert family in the project browser right click and then find type parameters and now we start connecting the host family parameters with the nested family parameters. And we are back in plan view. We connect the annotation line, the distance between culvert element 1 and 2 to the culvert length. And we do that because we want no spacing. So we forgot to create this parameter. It's basically culvert length divided by 2. The value here is a formula based and not to be changed by any user. So we place it in the group other. The purpose of this parameter is to force our array of culvert element to start at zero. We mark our annotation tags and find our parameter just created. We click the element and just quickly rotate it. Then we select the array tool and go for the move to second option. This setting specifies the spacing between each member of the array in contrast to move to last which specifies the first and last member in the array. Another major benefit of nesting a component, it provides access to the center line of our object, making it easier to align the center of the nested family with the reference planes, as opposed to locking it to the edges of any geometry that might break the array and cause 
others in the family. Having established the array and aligned elements 1 and 2 with our reference points, the next step is to create the array number parameter. And this has to be an integer. This parameter will help us increase and decrease the number of elements in the array depending on the user-defined length. We do place this in the group other. Since this will be a calculated number value based on the length, we then proceed to mark the annotation for the array and find the label in our top bar. For some reason, the array label, the place where the parameter is connected to the annotation, are a bit hidden. I don't know why Revit wants to hide the parameter, but it is what it is. We associate it with the array number and we try to flex it to see what happens. Yeah, so this is pretty smooth so far. But here we have an error. The next potential is issue that can disrupt our array family is when inputting one as the array number. Since the array cannot consist of just one element, our family breaks. As you can see, the minimum requirement is two. However, there are instances where we need the flexibility to place just one element. Now, let's explain how to achieve this. Firstly, we establish an if statement to make sure our array covert number doesn't go below the number value 2, because if so, the array breaks. So, if the length divided by the covert length is less than 2, the return value is 2. If the number is 2 or greater, the return value is length divided by covert length. Let's test to see if our if statement works as we intend by not giving us a number value less than 2 when changing the total value. So firstly we test the higher numbers, but when entering the value 1000, the calculated value should have been 1. But the if statement works just like we wanted by giving us the minimum value, that is 2. But sometimes we do want to show just one element. To solve that problem, we introduce two yes-no visibility parameters, one single array parameter and one several array parameter. The visibility of these parameters toggles on and off based on whether the array number is set to 1 or more. We want the array single parameter to be turned on when the array number is set to 1. We want the array several parameter to be turned on when the array number is set to 2 or higher. Just type in length divided on culvert length bigger than 1. We also want the array single parameter to deactivate when the array several is turned on and vice versa. We achieve this using a NOT formula. As we search between one and several in the array number, the yes no visibility parameter will turn on and off. Now we need to associate the visibility parameter to our elements in the array. We mark the array, we go to edit group, we then click one of the element, change one, change everyone, connect it to the several array parameters, which turn off the element when the parameter is turned off. And then associate our single culvert element with a yes no single parameter, which will be shown only when the array number is less than 2. We turn on the preview visibility, meaning it's allowing the user to preview the display of families without having to load content into a test project and test the display there. You will see a yellow border, meaning you are now in the preview visibility window. We go on to flex our array culvert family before saving it and loading it into our main project, where we will do some more flexing. One thing we forgot was to add the yes-no visibility parameter for our concrete edge in our generic line-based family. We quickly just do that and load it into the project again.
And that concludes this tutorial on how to create a curved length based family with arrays. Be sure to like and subscribe.